Everything is meaningless. Everything is vanity, a chasing after the wind. And we have realized that what Solomon meant when he said vanity or meaningless is that it was like shepherding or controlling the direction of the wind. Na walang masyadong magayari, walang masyadong ma-accomplish because it cannot be fully accomplished. In other words, meaningless means that life cannot be controlled. That life cannot be shepherded nor fully understood. This being the case, the teacher prescribed the enjoyment of whatever and whenever. Sabi niya, total ang buhay ay parang paghabol sa hangin, parang pagkontrol sa hangin. Kahit tangkain mo, kahit pansamantalang magkaroon ka ng parang tagumpay, hindi naman talaga malulubos, ang mabuti pa, mag-enjoy ka na lang. Sakyan mo na lang ang buhay, at nang sa ganon ay lalong marami ang iyong mapakinabang dito. Sa pagpapatuloy na ating pag-aaral ngayon, chapter 3, pinamagatan natin, live and enjoy the moment. Thank you, Lord, for our time to be with you. Thank you for our time to be together. Cleanse us from all our iniquities. Make us whole, make us clean so we can see your face and hear your voice. Speak to us powerfully. We ask you, Father, to cleanse us and forgive us so that nothing may hinder the flow of your blessings into our hearts. Open our eyes and ears. Teach us to apply Solomonic wisdom in our lives. Protect us from lies and falsehood. Protect us from evil men and evil spirits. And may you protect our loved ones who are not with us right now. Lord, be our teacher now. We ask you, in the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1. I'll be reading from the contemporary English version. There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven. One of the most famous lines of the Bible. Solomon says that things will happen whenever they have to happen. You cannot help it. It will happen. In Ecclesiastes 3.2, there's a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot. Now, of course, he says that life is cyclical. You get born, you die. Things start living and then they end and then they die and take another form of life. That there is a time to be born, to die, and to be reborn into a new form, to be reinvented. Wala naman talagang namamatay eh. Kahit yung isda na namatay, kinain mo, naging part of you na siya, di buhay pa siya. Kahit na ikaw kinain ka ng pating, buhay pa yung pating. So there's a part of you that continues to live. Yung kinain mong papaya, hindi naman siya namatay, naging part of you. Nabulok ka, naging lupa ka ulit, kinain ka naman ng luya, naging luya ka, patuloy na umiikot-ikot ang buhay. Yung spirito lang natin yung pwera sa kwento. We're talking about yung physical aspect of life. Wala talagang namamatay. We only take on new forms. That aside from biological life, marami pang ibang namamatay. Ideas, points of views, and values become obsolete. They become irrelevant. So ang tao na patuloy na mabubuhay at makikinabang sa buhay, yung marunong magsabing ay obsolete na to, tapos na ang panahon ng ideya na ito, ibang ideya na. Tapos na ang system na ito, tapos na yung method na ito, meron namang iba. Kaya kahit yung mga entertainers who know how to reinvent themselves, they continue living. No? Pero yung napaku na sila sa isang format, sa isang sistema, nagiging obsolete. Also, some relationships die. May panahon niya nagsisimula, umuusbong, namumulaklak, nagka-climax, tapos namamatay din. Some arrangements and transactions end. Some feelings die. Life is constantly renewing. So how do you benefit from such comings and goings? Well, minimize suffering and maximize enjoyment brought about by this reality. If things and people and ideas die, how will you have peace in life? Do not hold on tightly to anything or to anyone. Hold while the holding is good. Let go when you must. So be ready and willing to let go when it's time. Enjoy it to the maximum while it's there, while it lasts. And when it says goodbye, then say goodbye and say hello to another day. Alam niyo po yung umaalis, akala mo lang yun. Halimbawa, nasa pier ka, may barko ka, nakakaway-kaway. Ang laki-laki ng barko, nakatingala ka pa. Paglayo ng paglayo nun, nagiging paliit ng paliit. Sa tingin mo lang, pero yung tao naman gagihintay sa kabilang pier, palaki ng palaki sa kanya yung barko dahil dumadating sa kanya. So, depende lang sa punto de vista kung papaalis ba o papa rating ang isang bagay. 
Kaya dapat kung papaalis na, mag-goodbye ka na. Kung paparating, mag-hello ka. Marami mga tao hindi masaya kasi pinipilit mag-hello sa papaalis at mag-goodbye sa paparating. Ang sinasabi ni Solomon, yung mangyayari, mangyayari. Kailangan marunong kang uh, tumimpla sa panahon. Na ito talaga. Ito ang panahon, therefore ito. Si Percy Bishishel, sabi niya, We look before and after and pine for what is not. Kaya daw laging malungkot ang tao. You only look before and after. You don't look at the now. Ang laging inaasam, the good old days or the coming future. You neglect to enjoy the present. At hinahanap yung wala, ang hinihingi, yung imposible. At sabi ni Alexander Pope, Be not the first by whom the new is tried, nor yet the last to lay the old aside. Para ka masaya, dapat hindi ka extreme. Do not be too early or too late. Many people are too early for their times. So ano nangyayari? They are killed. And then later on you say, they are martyrs, but they're ahead of their time. Ano naman nangyayari doon sa too late? Wala na. Naiwan na sila ng lahat ng benefit. Kaya dapat marunong kang sumakay sa panahon. There's a time to plant and a time to uproot. Ano yung uprooting? Ang marahil na tinutukoy dito na itinatanin, malabaw, gabi, you uproot to harvest. You don't uproot to destroy, but just to harvest and to continue the life cycle. So it means that you plant and you harvest. Planting and harvesting have to be scheduled because seasons and environmental factors figure in agriculture, even in man's affairs. May mga panahon talaga, pagka sa palayan, pagka hindi ka nagtanim agad, huli ka nagtanim, huli ka nga ani. Ang problema, umani na yung iba, naiwan ka pa, na may grain, hindi pa hinog, lahat ng daga sa bukid lilipat sa'yo kasi ikaw na lang yung mayroong grain, na huli ka, kaya sorry ka na lang. Kaya sabay-sabay yan, pag nagtataniman, sabay-sabay. Yung hindi marunong sumabay sa takbo ng panahon, yun ang laging may conflict. Yan ang laging may problema. So plant on time in order to harvest on time. Now planting is not only to agriculture. Planting could be in terms of investments. When do you invest? When you are prosperous. When you have many other things to spare. And also when you are still strong so that when you become weak and you begin to be weak, you begin harvesting. Kailang ka kukuha ng insurance? Pag bata ka pa para mura. Pagka bata ka pang wala ka pang sakit, no? ano ka, love ng insurance, may sakit ka na, i-insure ka pa, no way. Di ba? Gusto ka siyempre pagkakitaan ng insurance. Kaya pagka nagkakatanda ka na, ayaw ka na insure. So, kailan ka magpapa-insure? When you are still very, very acceptable, dapat may oras yan. Pati relationships, pagmamahal, kailan ka magmamahal, kailan ka aani ng pagmamahal na yon timing. Verses 3 to 8. There is a time for killing and healing, For destroying and building, for crying and laughing, weeping and dancing, a time for throwing stones and gathering stones, a time for embracing and parting. There is a time for finding and losing, keeping and giving, for tearing and sowing, listening and speaking. There is also a time for love and hate, for war and peace. So, lahat ng extremes na yan may panahon. And many times, the morality of something, a deed or an act, depends heavily on its timing. Bihirang-bihira yung absolutely right and absolutely wrong at any given time. The time colors its correctness or wrongness. Kaya there's a time to keep quiet, there's a time to speak. And what was appropriate to say one second ago no longer is if you are late. Therefore, it is no longer good to say Napakahalaga may panahon, pati ang pag-ikot ng mga planeta, ang paglubog at pagsikat ng araw, lahat may panahon. So there's a time to kill and heal, not only people, but also ideas and arrangements. To destroy and build, to cry and laugh, according to what we have read, to weep and to dance. So kung masaya ang panahon, makisaya. Kung lungkot, makilungkot. Huwag laging nakasalungat. There's a time to gather and a time to scatter. To earn and to spend habang tama to earn, pero mayroon din tama mga kapatid to spend. Huwag lang kayong earn ng earn, save ng save. There's also time to splurge. Lahat ng yan, basta tama ang panahon, gumaganda. Everything in its time. There's a time to collect and to distribute, to get and to give, to embrace and to part, to find and to lose. 
Pag merong nawala sa inyo, anong reaksyon nyo? Initially, lulungkot ka kasi nawala. Pero dapat sandali lang yon. Ang matira na dapat, magpasalamat ka kasi nawala. Bakit? Nawalang ka lang kasi nagkaroon ka na. Yung hindi nagkakaroon, hindi yung nawawalan kahit kailan. No? Something's lost and something's gained in living every day. And you can't lose what you never had. You can't lose what you never found. So when you lose it, you say, sayang naman, I feel bad, I lost it. But on the other hand, I should feel good because I used to have it. Nagkaroon na ako. Nakatikim na ako. Nakahiram na ako. At yan ang ginasabi natin sa mga tao. Pinapahiram ka ng anak, pinapahiram ka ng kapatid, ng asawa, ng kaibigan. Dumarating ang panahon, binabawi. Ang natitira sa tao, sama ng loob. Samatalang dapat magpasalamat ka, aba, nakatikim ka. Nagkaroon ka, nakahiram ka. So panahon na para isoli yan. Because you cannot have everything and you cannot hold on to anything too long. Ang manghinayang ka, yung may asawa ka dyan ng 10 years na hindi mo minahal, tapos kayo biglang namatay, di sayang naman, hindi kayo nagkamahalan. Nagkaroon ka ng anak, hindi mo na mahal. Nagkaroon ka ng magulang, hindi mo na mahal. Tapos nawala, I won't begrudge you for feeling bad. Kaya ang dapat nga, i-maximize mo yung relasyon habang nandun. Para pag nawala, nagdaramdam ka lang at nawala, pero ang pinakamatagal mo rin mararamdaman, pasalamat pa rin. Kasi, at least, pinagbigyan ka ng langit, nakaranas ka na magkaroon. A good attitude when you lose something or someone is to be thankful for having found and enjoyed it. Salamat, nakahiram. Sabi niya, there's a time though to listen. When is a good time to listen? It is when you do not understand. Baligtad ang mga tao, when they do not understand ang ingay. But it's a time to listen when you do not understand so that you will have a chance at understanding it. Magkaroon ka man lang pagkakataon na maunawaan yun. Another good time to listen is when you don't like what you hear. Why? Why should you listen when you do not like what you hear? Because it will open up your mind to another possibility, to another arrangement, another way of thinking and doing things. You should always give a chance to what you do not want to hear. Because those that you like to hear, you will always get to hear anyway. Kasi pag gusto mong marinig, gagawa ka ng gagawa ng paraan marinig mo yun. Yung ayaw mong marinig, lagi mong pagsasarhan, hindi mo na madidinig kahit kailan. Kaya mga marurunong na tao, nananahimik. Pag may nadidinig silang, hindi nila naiintindihan o ayaw nila. Alam nyo na, ang ginagawa ng mga mangmang. Pag may nadidinig silang, hindi nila naiintindihan, nakikipag-compete sila agad. At kung ayaw nila yung nadidinig nila, nire-reject nila agad. Kamangmangan yun. Give it its day in court. Whatever it is. Kasi hindi mo alam, doon nage-expand. Kailan nage-expand ang ating brain? when we accept what previously was unacceptable. No? Or when we reject what previously was acceptable because of reasoning. Kailangan nag-iisip ka. A good time to speak is when you have a good message and a good timing and when it is constructive. Speech also has its bad time. Kahit maganda yung message mo, pag wrong timing, bali wala rin yun. Timing, you will realize, is nearly as important as the message itself. Na kung marunong ka mag-time, more is gained under the sun. Now, time is ephemeral. It passes. It always moves. So what do you do? You enjoy good times. It will not be forever. Lagi kong sinasabi sa mga may anak, enjoy yan yung mga anak nyo hanggang mga 5, 7 years old. Yung lagi kayong inaakyat na parang puno, laging nakakalong, laging ayaw humiwalay. Kasi mamaya ni ayaw na nyo makita kayo kasabay sa mall eh. No? Lalo pag nag high school, nagka-college na. Samantalahin nyo na habang laging nakadikit sa inyo. May panahon para doon. Ngayon, kung kailan naman yung mga bata ayaw lagi kayong kasama, lagi nyo pinipilit sumama. Kaya lagi may struggle. Nung bata na gustong sumama, lagi nyo iniiwan. Wrong timing. May panahon. Pagka nakita natin na may panahon na ganito, ang matatanda, pagka siyempre nagkakaedad na, yung panahon na para maging sentimental, maging matampuhin. So panahon na yan para bigyan ng maraming oras at panahon. Pero merong oras siya na mas gusto niya, independent siya. Hindi niya masyadong pinapansin. Lahat halos ng gulo ng mga pamilya, wrong timing. Ang pagbabantay, ang pagluluwag, ang pagsasabi ng yes and no, wrong timing. So when the time is good, enjoy it. It will not always be like that. 
Eh, ano sasabihin nyo? Eh, paano kung bad yung time? Well, just endure bad times. Tulad ng good times, they won't be forever. Pag alam mo na yung saya, aalis din, sasamantalahin mo. Pag alam mo na yung lungkot, hindi rin magtatagal, aalis din, eh, tiisin mo na lang, aalis din yan, pagsasawaan ka rin yan. Walang lungkot na forever because nothing is perfect. Aalis at aalis. Ang mahalaga, pag sobra ka nalulungkot, sobra ka nahihirapan, just survive the night. May darating ding umaga. Huwag ka lang maglaslas ng pulso o uminong ng lason o tumalon sa dagat kasi maiiba rin yung chemistry ng katawan mo bukas. Kahit sobrang lungkot mo ng alas dos ng umaga, pag nag-alas isa ng umaga, maiiba yan. Just survive. Kasi walang laging nandyan. Time keeps on moving. So though times cannot be totally controlled, we are told that human participation can help shape it. Totoo, hindi natin nakokontrol ang buhay, hindi natin mailalagay sa bulsa, hindi natin matatalian kung saan pupunta yung buhay, pero meron pa rin tayong nagagawa somehow sa general direction na pupuntahan nun. Sa general speed na magiging andar ng buhay, kaya lagi tayong nagpa-participate in a very positive way. It is our duty to ourselves to keep on learning, to be more and more and more knowledgeable so you can discern the comings and goings of the seasons and time your life according to such natural law. And what is nice, but spending more time doing good and attracting good, that is a good investment. Especially when you do not have any clear thing in mind as to what to do, keep doing good. You can never go wrong. Kasi nakakapagtanim tayo ng siguradong tutubo at magkakaroon ng harvest. However, doing good and such good deeds are not guarantees that you will have a very happy life. But they only position you for better chances at being happy. Yung iba sasabihin, bakit po ang dami kong ginawang mabuti hanggang hindi ako nag-e-enjoy? Pero ipinoposition mo ang sarili mo na mas posibilidad na tumanggap ka ng mabuti kaysa masama. At hindi pa tapos ang buhay, hintayin mo lang nang hintayin ang mga bagay na yan. Ecclesiastes 3:9 to 14 What does the worker gain from his toil? I have seen the burden God has laid on men. He has made everything beautiful in its time. He has also set eternity in the hearts of men, yet they cannot fathom what God has done from beginning to end. Said another way, Solomon tells us that man cannot fully understand God nor life. So huwag nila magsikap ng sobra. Unawain ng konti at sakay ka lang sa buhay. Ecclesiastes 3, 12-14 I know that there is nothing better for men than to be happy and do good while they live. That everyone may eat and drink and find satisfaction in all his toil. This is the gift of God. I know that everything God does will endure forever. Nothing can be added to it and nothing taken from it. God does it so that men will revere Him. So the teacher makes sense of all the time offers by not studying life too much. Sabi niya, gano'n naman pala eh. Hindi mo rin sobrang mauunawa. Huwag mo nalang sobrang unawain. Unawain mo nalang yung kaya mong maabot at yung hindi mo maabot, tigilan mo nalang kaiisip. Alam nyo, kumisan ang kumisan, very mind-boggling to me, personally. Pagka on a clear night sky, tinignan ko yung mga planeta, ang lalayo. So, gano'n kaya kalayo ang lahat ng ito? Yung hindi maubos-ubos-ubos. Yung pagka sinasabi na 360 light years away yung isang planet, one light year is, you know, the time that it takes for light to travel for one year, the distance it covers in a year of traveling. Eh, ang bilis-bilis ng light. One year na nagbabiyahe yung light na ganun, yung mararating niya is one light year. And then there are planets that are thousands of light years away. Can you comprehend space? Sabi ko, huwag nalang masyadong isipin. Sabi ni Solomon, masisira ka lang ka iisip dyan. No? Hindi mo rin naman sobrang mauunawa yan. Kaya intindi mo, manood ka nalang ng TV, enjoyin mo yung kinakain mong inihaw na pusit. Yan ang buhay. Huwag mo masyadong gawing masyadong profound. Kasi nahihirapan ka lang. It's useless, it's meaningless, it's like catching the wind. At sabi niya, itong gawin ninyo, kayang-kaya niyo ito maintindihan. Always enjoy life. Enjoy food and drink and work. They form a cycle. You know, there's a very interesting relationship between food, drink, and work. Because work brings food and drink, and love for drink and food necessitates work. Kaya may relationship. Ganyan ang buhay. Magtrabaho ka, tapos... 
enjoy the fruits of your labor. Kumain ka, uminom ka, magtrabaho ka ulit para may inumin ka ulit, kainin ka yan, bago malaman, o namatay ka na, tapos na yung buhay. Huwag ka nang masyado mag-isip. Sabi ko nun, problema na yan ang Diyos, yung mga hindi ipinapabunyag sa'yo, huwag mo nang masyadong alamin. And we should be thankful for work. Enjoy work. Kahit paulit-ulit natin basahin ang Ecclesiastes, makikita lagi dyan, enjoy your work. So what do you do when you don't enjoy your work? Change it. When you cannot change your work, change your attitude. Pero kailangan matuto ka mag-enjoy ng ginagawa mo. Why? Because you have to do it anyway. Sino ang masaya? Sino yung malungkot? Yung papasok, ang bigat ng puso, ang bigat ng loob, nagdadabog, o yung papasok na ine-enjoy na rin niya, kahit nag-aayos lang siya ng mga nabuhol na paperclip, ang saya-saya na niya. So at the end of the day, sino ang masaya sa buhay? Kailangan dapat marunong tayong umimbento ng kasiyahan. Kasi, lugi ka pag dumaan ng isang araw na hindi ka nasyahan. Kasi kahit kailan, hindi na yun babalik. Hinding, hindig, hindi na. Yung lugi mo doon, lugi mo na yun forever. Meanwhile, yung saya mo doon, wala nang makakaagaw sa'yo. Natapos na, sumaya ka na, sino pang makakaagaw noon? Kahit lumungkot ka ngayon, yung kahapon na masaya ka, hindi na pwedeng palitan. Kaya dapat ang tao marunong gumawa ng saya. At hindi lang yun mga kapatid, pinapayagan natin yung kapwa natin na umimbento ng saya niya. Hindi natin siya kinikiljoy, hindi natin siya laging pinagbabawalan, lagi na lamang na sinisiraan ng loob, dinidiscourage, pinapagilty. Kasi kanya-kanyang gawa, gawa ng saya yan. May mga tao naglalaba, mga bula-bula lang ng laba, sumasaya na sila. Can you take that away from them? Kung total, lalaban mo rin lang yan. Kung nagdadabog ka, nahirapan pa yung loob mo. Wala kang magagawa tungkol dyan. But God keeps control and understanding of life out of man's reach. Sabi ni Solomon, para lagi siyang irespeto at sambahin. Merong hiwaga, merong misteryo ang buhay dahil may hiwaga at merong misteryo ang Diyos ng buhay. At sa lahat daw ng nahiinawaan natin, lalo natin sambahin ang Diyos. Kasi nauunawaan pala natin. Pero hindi natin nauunawaan, lalo naman tayong sumamba kasi hindi nga natin nauunawaan. Sa Kanya natin iasa. When you have this positive attitude, it is difficult to make you sad. It is difficult to rob you of your happiness. Let's go on, chapter 3, verse 15 of Ecclesiastes. Whatever is, has already been and what will be has been before, and God will recall the past to account. So niya, wala namang bago. Paulit-ulit lang lahat ng bagay. Kahit fashion, paulit-ulit lang lahat ng bagay. Walang bago. Kahit yung sasabihin mo, may na-invento, na-discovery, nalaman lang yung mechanism behind it, yung mechanics, yung method. Pero ando na yun dati pa. Kahit nung hindi pa naiimbento yung lightsaber na ilaw, nandun na yung ideya na yun, na-discovery lang nung nag-iisip at nag-kukutikot ng mga kung ano-ano mga bagay at nakakalikalikot dyan, tuloy nakakadiscovery. Pero yung na-discovery mo, dati nang nandun yun, itinakda na yan nung nilikha ng Diyos ang buhay, nandun na lahat. Nandun na lahat. Kasi sabi, huwag ka magyayabang. Therefore, huwag mo rin masyadong pag-uri ng sarili mo para lagi ka makakita ng bago. Kasi nandun na yan, walang bago. Luma na yan nakakataon lang na yung mata mo, luminaw nung panahon na yun, nakita mo siya, pero dati na siyang nandun. Man can benefit from the cycles of life by learning from the past. No? Sabi niya, he will cause the past to account. Dapat, lagi mong tinatawag yung past, o ano ba yung lesson mo, ano ba yung naituro mo sa buhay ko, para hindi sayang. Kahit tayo nagkamali nung nakaraan, pero lagi nating iniisip yung pagkakamali na yun, natuto na tayo, nahug na yung ulitin, benefit na rin yung pagkakamali na yun. The only way to benefit from a mistake is to learn from it. Kaya mga tao na nagkakamali sa buhay natin, tinatanggal natin sila agad, wrong. Isipin mo, nagkamali siya, ngayon alam na niyang mali yun. Chances are, hindi na niya mauulit. E kumuha ka na isang bagong tao, hindi pa niya alam na mali yun, magkakamali ulit siya. Paulit-ulit lang yan. Kaya mas maraming mali na nagawa yung tao sa'yo, mas Asset mo yan sa buhay. Kasi at least by elimination, marunong na siya. Alam na niya kung ano yung mali. Lima na lang, paulit-ulit at sinasadya niyang ulitin yun. Pero asset yung nakakamali. Ano yung isang taong maraming naging mali? Yung isang taong walang kamali-mali? Sinong dapat mong pagtiwalaan doon? Yung marami na naging mali. Kasi marami na siyang narealize, mali pala to, mali pala to. Ay, yung hindi pa nagkakamali, hindi pa niya alam yun eh. Kaya yung nagkakamali, meron yung pag-asa kung magiging positive yung attitude mo, sabi mo, now I know. Hindi ko na siya ulitin. Or uulitin ko man siya, iiwasan ko na yung mga hindi magagandang bahagi nun. 
So much can be had when we are in tune with the cycles and the seasons. May panahon talaga. Kaya maganda yung nakatira ka sa, sa bukid, sa bundok, sa nature. Kasi nakikita mo talaga yung cycles. Misan, uh, city life deprives you of that. Eh. Umuulan na nga, hindi mo pa alam. No? Gabi na nga, hindi mo pa alam. Eh, kung nasa opisina ka, yung detached ka from nature. Pero yung malapit sa nature, mas nababasa niya yung takbo ng panahon. May takbo ang panahon. Halimbawa, rainy days. Rainy days talaga yan. Utang na loob, huwag ka namang mag-schedule ng kasalan. Huwag ka mag-June bride. Diba? Liba nilang gusto mo talaga, Independence Day, parade ang background ng kasal mo. Pero June Bride, ginagaya mo sa Amerika, June Spring, dito, tagbagyo yun. Diba? Kaya pastor, kapakasal po ako ng June, saan? Sa garden po. Eh, nung susuot mo, iha, bota. Ay, high heels mo. Lulubog ka sa putik, promise. June yan eh. Diba? Ang ipagawa mo, kapote. Huwag trahit ni Buda, kakalad ka rin mo yan sa putik. Dahil June. So, may panahon. Hindi mo kayang palitan yun. So, mag-indoors ka na lang kung gusto mo June. Merong mga kung ano-anong malalaking event, ilalagay niya sa oras ng tagulan, tapos dasal kayo ng dasal na huwag umulan, pati Diyos, pinapagod yung makinig. Eh, nakatakda na, tagulan yun, mananalangin kang huwag umulan. Sumabay ka na lang. Di ba, huwag ka dun mag-event. O kaya lahat kayo, nakaswimming trunks, uh, debut mo, di, okay lang umulan. Pero itatapat mo sa ganon, mahirap yun. Huwag mo nang ibahin yung nakatakda, nakasulat na yun eh. Kaya maraming struggle. At nakita ko po mga kapatid, ang daming ikakasal. Nagtatakda ng tagulan talaga, tapos wedding garden, or by the beach. Pero ang trahe de boda, hindi pang beach wear ha, talagang pang ballroom. Tapos padasal ng padasal, pati church, napapagod ka na dasal, dasalan ng dasalan lahat. Kung nga kayo magdasal, tagulan talaga, ba't yung sinasalugat ang Diyos? Diba? So, kung magigawa kayo ng schedule, at yan i-apply nyo mga kapatid sa marami pang ibang events of your life, may panahon talaga. Pagka Berman, sa mga hikain, talagang sinusumpong yan. So, huwag kayo dyan gumawa ng event na ayaw nyo may daladala kayong hika to the event. Dahil may panahon eh. Sabi ni Solomon, there is a time for every matter under heaven. Kita nyo, pagka-enrollment, enrollment, pag-graduation, graduation. Pag-pasok, pasok. Kita nyo, pag oras ng pasok, yung hindi pumapasok, sa oras ng graduation, hindi ko mag-graduate. Hindi siya kasi kasali sa tamang oras. Napakahalagang isipin. 16 to 17. And I saw something else under the sun. In the place of judgment, wickedness was there. In the place of justice, wickedness was there. I thought in my heart, God will bring to judgment both the righteous and the wicked. For there will be a time for every activity, a time for every deed. Sabi niya, napansin ko, hindi naman laging may katarungan. Hindi laging napaparusahan ng mali. Pero naisip ko rin, dahil ang Diyos ay makatarungan, siguradong may oras din ng paghuhukom ang lahat. Kaya huwag kayong maiinip sa judgment ng Diyos. Don't take vengeance. Huh? Don't avenge yourself. Sabi ni Lord, vengeance is mine. Timing is mine. The teacher places prevalent injustice and violence in perspective. Kumisan marami nagtatanong, bakit po nagahari ang masasama? Ayan sabi ni Solomon. Tatapos din yan, may oras yan, merong oras ang Diyos para dyan dahil may oras para sa katarungan. Since God is good, injustice and violence will be judged. Kaya kayo nagagawa ng injustice, ng violence. One, stop positioning yourselves in a place where you could be abused. And two, don't take revenge. God will have His time for vengeance and for justice. Pero hindi naman kung may oras ang Diyos, ibig sabihin, lagi mo nalang i-expose ang sarili mo to danger and to injustice. When you can help it, try not to be there. If there is injustice, do not be the object and the subject of it. Pero sa mga nangyari na, huwag natin laging sisihin ang panahon. Alam nyo, isa sa mga pinakasayang na ginagawa, yung pinagsisisihan ng lumipas na. Minsan ka nang na-disadvantage dahil may maling nangyari nung nakaraan. Pero tuwing pinagsisisihan mo yon na di-disadvantage ka ulit. Uh, ulit-ulit kang nadadamage tuwing nagsisisi ka. So, hindi naman dapat remorse ang kailangan kung nagkamali tayo. Repent. What is repentance? You turn from bad and turn to good. Stop doing wrong and start doing right. That's repentance. To be restored. To be corrected. So, kung may nagawa na tayong mali na nun, huwag nyo nang sisihin ang sarili. Ano pa ulit-ulit. Learn from it and get on with life. 
At ganun din, huwag na nating sisihin yung kapwa natin pa ulit-ulit. Kasi nagkakalayo lang ang loob natin, nagkakaganit lang tayo kasi sisi, hindi na rin naman maibabalik talaga. So, matuto mula sa pagkakamali at ituloy ang buhay. One who presently suffers injustice or violence could find comfort in doing what could be done, in hoping in God's cycles, in the end of everything, especially evil. And by knowing time, you will have an eternity perspective. Mahalaga din nakikita natin yung buhay, hindi lang from a very short range, but from an eternity perspective. Ano ba ang kinalaman nito doon sa magpakawalang hanggan? Pakikita natin, may lugar yan, imposibleng walang lugar ang Diyos para sa pagtutuwid ng mali at pagbibigay ng gantimpala sa tama. Chapter 3 of Ecclesiastes, verses 18 to 20. I also thought, As for men, God tests them so that they may see that they are like the animals. Man's fate is like that of the animals. The same fate awaits them both. As one dies, so dies the other. All have the same breath. Man has no advantage over the animal. Everything is meaningless. All go to the same place. All come from dust. And to dust, all return. Ang tinutukoy ni Solomon, siyempre, yung physical life, yung body, sabi, Sino may sabi sa iyo na mas mataas ka sa hayop? Pareho lang kayong mamamatay. Yung kapalaran mo, sasapitin din niya. Pero hindi naman ito ang tunay niyang mensahe. Ang ibig lang niyang sabihin, huwag mong isipin na better ka than animals, better than others, better than this, better than that. Man should not take himself too seriously. That man should not be too proud. That man should not deny or restrain his earthly side too much. Kasi kuminsan sabi mo, ay panghayop lang yung behavior na yan, yung kumakain ng sobra. Eh kuminsan gusto mong kumain, sobrahan mo. Hindi mo laging ginagawa, lumigaya ka, gawin mo. Yan natin was ang sinasabi ni Solomon, huwag ka namang masyadong magpaka-tao as against being animal or animalistic to the point na para ka ng poon, para ka ng santo, hindi ka na tao totoo. Yan, huwag ka masyadong serious. May commonalities kayo ng animals. Kahit sinasayang pag may espiritu ka, may kaluluwa ka. So do not deny always your human side. Kasi madalas natin yun eh. We say no to everything that we deem is so human or so earthly. But we are of the earth, we are of dust. God remembers that we are dust. Kaya pwede natin indulge yung part natin na yun so long as we don't harm our spirit. So meron kasi ang mga tao sa sobrang pagiging conservative or religious or whatever, nalilimutan na nila na tao sila. At inaalis na rin nila sa kapwa nila yung pagiging tao, nagiging idealistic ang pananaw nila sa lahat. Meron pa nga, oh, Christian ka, kahit na matayang nanay mo, huwag kang iiyak. Meron ganun, ha? Parang ayaw umiyak dahil Christian. Kaya nga inimbento ng Diyos ang lacrimal glands dito para mag-manufacture ng luha. So kung napapaiyak ka, di umiyak ka. Yun ang point. Umiiyak ang kambing, umiiyak ang pagong, umiiyak ka rin kahit ka Religyoso. na Dami ko nang nadinig na ganyan, hirap na hirap, kasi hindi sila makaiyak dahil Christian, dahil po parang nakakaya sa Diyos. Bakit nakakaya? Jesus wept nga eh. So, mo dapat tinatanggal sa sarili mo yung ganong pagiging earthly because you're also of the earth. It's part of your dual nature that you're a spirit and at the same time you are a body. At hindi yun dapat laging tinatanggihan. Yun lang na man should not take himself too seriously. Ecclesiastes 3, 21-22 Who knows if the spirit of man rises upward and if the spirit of the animal goes down into the earth? So I saw that there is nothing better for a man than to enjoy his work because that is his lot. For who can bring him to see what will happen after him? The question implies that no matter how theological you get, you are never really sure about the precision of your religious beliefs and expectations. Therefore, hindi ka dapat malugi. Whatever your concept of afterlife is, hindi mo dapat baliwalain yung present just for the concept of an afterlife. Because your concept might be wrong. Your concept might have some imprecisions. So what will happen, nalugi ka na forever dahil hindi mo na-enjoy yung mga pang dito, laging puro pang doon sa kabilang iniisip mo. Kasi sabi ni Solomon, don't take your yourself too seriously. Enjoy the moment. When eternity comes, enjoy it. But don't always deny yourself for the sake of eternity. God places you here now because you're supposed to be here now. Kung gusto ka niyang nasa kabilang buhay na, di kinuha ka na niya. 
Nandito ka pa, therefore live to the fullest. This observation should make people live life in order to go up to heaven. Dahil sinasabi niya talagang mayroon. But also, this observation should make people live life in order to live heaven in this life. Dapat when you leave this life, pag umalis ka na dito, you will live in heaven. But while you are here, you must live heaven here. Dapat umimbento ka ng mga pockets of heaven. Gumawa ka ng mga heavenly moments, heavenly devotions, and heavenly vocations para kung ano man ang konsepto mo sa darating pa, mali-mali man yun na tama-tama, hindi ka na nalugi dahil dito pa lang sa buhay na ito, nakalasap ka na ng langit. At mahalaga yun. Because there is heaven in both sides of eternity. Kung i-analyze natin ang sinasabi lang ni Solomon sa chapter 3, be on time. Greatest happiness, greatest benefit is by being on time. It's the best way to give the most to life and it's the best way to get the most out of life. Panginoon naming Diyos, salamat sa chapter 3 ni Solomon. Ang daming dapat isipin, ituro mo sa amin kung alin yung konting mahalaga na relevant sa amin. At pagdating ng panahon na yung iba pang mahalaga na hindi relevant ngayon, ipaalala mo sa amin. Masuri namin at maging kapakinabang din sa amin. Pakita mo sa amin, Lord, ngayon ang mga ginagawa naming sobrang huli. Kaya tuloy, hindi nagiging maganda ang buhay. O sobra namang maaga. Kaya hindi pahanda ang mga bagay na hihirapan ng marami. Ituro mo sa amin, Panginoon, yung ginagawa naming out of time with life, out of time with the seasons, and out of time sa mga pangangailangan at mga realities ng mga mahal namin sa buhay. Teach us to be sensitive. Magbulay-bulay tayo sandali mga kapatid, humingi tayo ng personal na mensahe para sa ikabubuti na ating buhay. Be alone with God in some moments of reflection.